Hi, my name is Brian, my son Mitch is behind the camera, and this is our garage elevator. This is our problem. It's a problem that a lot of us have. The staircase between the joists and the garage is so narrow. Even climbing up it is a pain in the ass. But bringing stuff up there of any size at all is really difficult and not impossible. So my wife and I, we're empty nesters now. We moved from a pretty good sized house in Indiana. We moved into this one level townhome in Minnesota. And we love it. But like most of us, we have so much stuff uh, that we need to store. Just the seasonal things. Christmas, Halloween, the different, ho the different holidays. We need to get access to it. Climbing up and down those stairs is not going to cut it for us. And bringing it up and down those stairs, it's dangerous too. So that's why we created this. That's why we needed to create this. I'm going to show you how we created it. So the first thing we had to do was get rails and attach them. Some people who do this use the garage door rails, which is fine. I just thought this looked cleaner, and um, so I went with these. These are Super Strut, uh, one five eighths inch uh, channel. Uh, very sturdy, really, really sturdy. And I have studs, you know, I, I, I'm screwing into the studs behind the drywall uh, with these three and a half inch screws. They don't, these don't, these don't have a lot of weight uh, pulling on top of them or out on them. It just has to guide the carriage going up. But we did have, I did have to consider what happens up on top there. The joist up there sticks out a little bit. So I had to put in this furring strip behind it. It worked perfectly. It was the, the exact right um, width or depth, I should say, thickness, I should say, um, to make it line up perfectly with that joist on top. You can see inside there, uh, the trolley wheels, there's uh, two on each side. Uh, they work really great. They're inch and five eighths. I'll, and I'll leave a, uh, a description and a, and a link. You can get them a number of places, but I'll leave a link. But there's two on each side attached to these uprights of the carriage on each side. They, there's a hole in the center of them, so you can attach them with the bolts. Uh, they work uh, really well. They're nice and smooth, and that's what to use. Okay, so this is the carriage. There's a lot of ways to design these carriages. I've seen people weld them together with steel channel, which would be perfect if I could weld, and I need all that metal working equipment. But um, this is something you can build you know, yourself, the average guy, with what they have in their garage. So what I've got is, it was really important that it's strong. It is pretty sturdy. I'm pretty happy with it. But I've got a big old hook here. I let I should say I got a two by six up here that then transfers to these supports on the carriage that go down. I got three big old bolts here. I had to have them this way. I, I didn't feel I need to hack saw them off at this point because they really don't get in the way. Um, and they had to be put in this way because of the because of the wall clearance back here. Uh, then I got a two by four coming down that attaches to the base, and this is built just like a you know like a like a, a stud frame. It's two by four. It's got like three supports in the middle. So it's very sturdy. And then obviously to, to uh, with concern about the twisting action here, we attach these pretty significant uh, flat rods or flat steel from the top of the carriage down to the corner. It doesn't get in the way when you're loading and, un and unloading. Matter of fact, it keeps things tucked in so it doesn't, nothing hangs over the edge and gets caught while it's going up there. So it works out really well. So I was really concerned about keeping the, the carriage sturdy. And it is, it's really sturdy the way it's built right now. But what I did is I've got it bolted just like at the top, I've got it bolted on the bottom. And then I've added a couple more two by fours that I would attach one at a time with just a whole bunch of, um, you know, two and a half and three and a half inch uh, screws, like decking screws, right? And um, when I put it all together and with these struts, this thing is really sturdy. It does not uh, move at all. Let's take a look up top. All right, let's start here with the purchase of this motor. It's an industrial strength motor. It's a 550 pound uh, capacity. It'll do 1100 too with a snatch block, but you can see it's, it's certainly 550 pounds is more than enough to pull whatever I'm going to be pulling up and down uh, this uh, on this elevator. It, but it will do 1100 with a snatch block in it, but then we'll never do that. So this is a really high quality motor. Uh, the first uh, concern, I would say, is how I'm going to attach this motor 
uh, where it's not going to come off, obviously. So what I did is almost every one of these motors comes with these hoops up here. Uh, and this is no different. It comes with that. So what I ultimately decided to do was use this leftover uh, super strut channel to secure the motor to the channel and then secure the channel to this beam, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But I use pretty significant size bolts that go through the channel. There's actually six of them, four pretty close to the motor, and then two on the ends uh, that hold the channel up. And it's a really uh, durable channel, but I wouldn't trust it on its own. But with these bolts on there, it's more than enough to hold this motor in position uh, and do the job. Up here, I was really concerned about getting this motor secured to something that is going to be sturdy. So I built this frame, or we, I keep saying I, but I mean we built this frame. Uh, and I'll show you how I built it in a second, but we had to get it into, the, into some uh, uh, two by four studs coming up. And there's drywall here again. So we pulled the drywall off and then we doubled up on the studs. And then what we decided to do is we decided to go ahead and layer these two by fours and then glue them together as we went. So each one, we put one on, screw it in, glue it, put the next one on, screw it in, and put a lot of screws in there. This thing is really sturdy. You see, we basically have we've created a pretty solid beam right here. Um, it's going to be post. I'm not a carpenter, so I don't know all the terms, so I get them jumbled up sometimes. But um, and then we created a pretty solid beam going across the top. You can see it's a little off center, but it doesn't really matter as long as the, the hoist motor is centered over the carriage. That's all that really matters. We had to have it off center like this because this is the next uh, uh, stud going up. So. That's how the frame works. I think you'll see it's pretty rugged. Notice that there's no movement in the beam or the support at all. Working out really well. It's Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Mitch brings it up. Okay, so this is part of the problem that we are trying to uh, resolve. This is pretty common in so many homes but it's so narrow. Going up and down, trying to bring things up and down is really difficult. Climbing it is one thing, but trying to get things through that hole are really difficult. So anyway, we left this here because we don't really plan on using this per se as a person lift, but we probably will more than we, than we intend to. But I wanted to make sure that we could leave that capability and also not <laughs> create a hazard where we would fall through if we tripped or something or fell on it or whatever. So I just installed this little um, door on top to give it nice, make it nice and firm. So as I said earlier, my wife and I are, we're empty nesters now. My, my kids are all gone and we moved from a pretty good size home and lot in Indiana out here to Minnesota to a, you know, a one floor town home, but it did have this nice storage room up here. So this elevator was built to bring everything up. And now look, we have everything that was in the house that we just need to store like Christmas and Halloween and kids' old things and stuff like that. It's just a lot of stuff. And this is winter, so we have the chairs from outside. We have those stored up here. We just have everything stored up here. So it's working out really, really well. I couldn't be happier with it. Everything came up, including my dad's old toolbox that I've been wanting to hold on to. So I get to hold on to it up here.